Hi, there's a few familiar faces. Thank you very much indeed for uh, coming to Kedron this morning to the State Disaster Coordination Centre. My name's Alistair Dawson. I am a Chief Superintendent in the Queensland Police Service. provide you a brief overview on what's happening today and uh, we'll start with the far north, uh, well sorry, central Queensland. Well, Campton's uh, currently the Fitzroy River is at 9.1 and steady. There are still 170 people uh, accommodated in the evacuation centre uh, and obviously that will be the case until such time as the waters start to drop. Coming down to uh, St George in the uh, west of the state, uh, southwest, the river levels are at 13.18, they're falling slowly and uh, it will take some time for that peak to move past. However, there is promising signs from uh, further upstream that the water is uh, now starting to drop away. Maribor reached a, a high yesterday of around about the 8 metre mark in the Mary River. They're not expected to go any further than that uh, at this point in time, even with additional water coming down the Mary River from, uh, from Gympie. The second peak they anticipate to be in the area of about 6 to 6.5 metres. Uh, however, there is uh, still work to be done in that uh, area in regards to some localised flooding. As you're aware, there's been significant rain in the southeast corner of the state overnight, and in some cases up to 300 millimetres in a 24-hour period, and that's had an impact on uh, on Gympie. Gympie, the Mary River, is was at 17 metres at 10:30 this morning and is rising. They are predicting that uh, it could reach as high as uh, 20 metres. This will have an impact on uh, some businesses in the town as well as some residents and police and emergency services are currently uh, door knocking uh, those affected residents and businesses. The town is in effect uh, in two halves now by the, uh, being cut by the Mary River and uh, the deployment of uh, resources has been to both sides of the uh, town to ensure that there is an affecting, effective presence across the, the community there. In Dolby... We're experiencing rises uh, in the Mile Creek. There has been rain in the Bunyas and also uh, in the local areas, quite heavy falls. That has now risen to 3.44. We're actually returning to a situation very similar to Christmas and there are currently 11 self-evacuations uh, from uh, the caravan park there. The town is in effect, again, uh, cut in half by the Mile Creek. Resources have been placed on both sides of the creek uh, to assist the town and uh, there's some very important messages that arise out of this. With flash flooding occurring in the southeast corner, we're actually asking motorists to take great care when driving, especially in heavy rain, and uh, to be very cognizant of the road conditions. Drive to a speed that is safe for the road conditions on which you are driving and that may be at a speed substantially lower than the actual posted speed limit on the road. The Bruce Highway is, uh, is uh, cut by water in a number of different uh, locations, especially in the Gympie area. There are reports that a, a large number of other roads uh, throughout the southeast corner are currently affected by water and some are impassable. We are asking people not to drive on roads that are flooded. There could be damage to these roads or they could be, uh, their vehicles could be swept from the roads by fast flowing water. There are a number of rural communities across the southeast corner, uh, quite a few to mention, but uh, what we are doing is we're looking at those communities, we're looking at the ingress and egress for those communities, and uh, we are working to uh, free up the access for those, um, for those communities. On the good news side of the, the front, the rain is expected to start to ease tomorrow, and uh, we shouldn't have the uh, repeat of the same heavy falls uh, that we've experienced over the last uh, 24 hours. I'll now pass over to Warren Brisbane from Emergency Management Queensland. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The event we experienced last night and are still experiencing, of course, South East Queensland is a major rain event and certainly producing some major flooding events across the community. I stress again the importance of people in the community to prepare themselves to be isolated due to road cuts and to ensure that they have emergency kits available. If you are isolated, please be patient as the emergency services go about the prioritisation of which people need to be looked after initially and we will hopefully get no sorry, we will get to you as soon as possible. So if you are isolated, please refer to the documentation we've given you on our websites about emergency kits and what you need to do. Be patient 
and you will be looked after as soon as possible. There are lots of roads cut as well and people are not only being isolated but now can't get into centres where they might need their resupplies, particularly medications. Emergency Management Queensland always assists the local disaster management groups to provide urgent medical resupplies. So if that is the case for you, please make contact with your local government and ask for the local disaster management group and state your reasons for requiring ur urgent medical resupply. Thank you. <coughs> how, how worried are you about the prospect of flooding in Brisbane? Um, that's a matter for the Brisbane City Local Disaster Management Group and they are confident that this event won't produce major flooding other than the isolated flooding events which we see for events such as this. So you're not making major preparations for major flooding in Brisbane? I can't get onto the council, I've tried them about 20 times today. Okay, I, I suggest you continue to try because I can't comment on what the Brisbane City Council are preparing for major flooding, if they are. Well, on the effect of 20 metres of water in Gympie, what, what are we expecting? Uh, we're expecting around about 65 businesses and possibly about 50 homes that could be affected uh, there. Uh, they have uh, started doing a lot of door knocking. There's a lot of uh, local work that's been undertaken. Again, that's the local disaster management group and the district disaster management group are doing a lot of work in that space. Right, have, you know, have you settled on the 20 metres? Because it is still raining up the back of here. I would say to you that... Um, Hydrology is always about predictions and estimations and they're constantly reviewing those uh, figures based on the amount of water that is actually falling into the catchment area. All right, so in other words, you're adjusting this what, every hour or thereabouts? I would say regular, yeah. In fact, uh, about on the hour is, is around about right and if not more frequently, depending on the amount of rainfall. Okay. What's the situation like in Kilcoy? In Kilcoy, um, I was advised that uh, there were a number of people that were caught... Uh, out insofar as about 15 local residents and a number of uh, uh, tourists were actually accommodated into a, a hall. Um, again, as the flash flooding starts to ease, so they'll be able to progress along their way. But again, the local disaster management arrangements, they've put in place a number of these facilities around southeast Queensland to cater for people that are caught between rising floodwaters. Uh, Long-range forecast for the sort of Queensland area. I know you get the forecast to go out yeah. further than the other ones that we see. Oh well, the, the forecast at the moment for us down here is easing tomorrow, and then uh, probably no r or limited rain uh, for Wednesday. But then the rain will be uh, more in the tropics, up in the uh, up in the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria and the Cape. All right. So you're expecting floodwaters to subside then. We're expecting, uh, we're expecting the waters to, to last for a few hours and possibly uh, the, the highway to be cut for probably up to a day. But after that, we expect them to subside fairly quickly. Has there been a lot of panic around South East Queensland and Brisbane? Are people worried about... Oh, look, I think people are naturally worried. And if, you, if it's your home that's so under, under threat, yes, I think you would be very worried. I think a lot, probably a lot of communities are probably thinking, oh, here we go again, uh, given the fact that uh, we've just been through... Uh, some fairly significant events over Christmas and we understand their concerns because especially in the case of Dolby which is going back to the same sort of height limits that uh, we have experienced over Christmas. But again, they're very proactive. We were on the phone till late last night talking uh, with the uh, disaster management people in uh, Dolby and they had a lot of uh, proactive uh, measures in place to, to warn residents. So I think you'll find a lot of the vehicles from low-lying areas have been moved to the showgrounds. There's quite a few vehicles there now. Um, sorry, I was going to Lucian, there's been a lot of concern about it, but we haven't heard any direct reports on it. No, well, I haven't received any direct reports either. I mean, the focus for for us here at the State Disaster Coordination Centre is a very strategic assistance required to uh, support local and district disaster management groups. And so the focus for us is about trying to solve those problems that are, are extremely complex in looking after the community in, the, you know, in this uh, time. How are emergency services going with fatigue as this whole situation continues on and on? Well, we have, uh, we have a number of people that are assigned to manage fatigue and I know that uh, in the local areas, talking to the local police, that they're managing that quite well. We're talking to uh, uh, some different people at different times, so what we're seeing is officers getting cycled through uh, different shifts. We are working longer hours and uh, I think that the community would expect us to, uh, to do that. 
Um, but again, there's plenty of time for rest at the end of the event, and the main thing is that we stay focused on what we're facing now uh, until such time as we can get the community through to the other side of that. You said the end of the event, the end of the event may well be April. Is where we're going? Well, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball because uh, it's one of those things where uh, we've sort of moved from one area in the state now to the southeast corner. Uh, I personally hope that. Uh, uh, come the midweek when the sun starts shining and the water starts dropping that we won't get any more rain for a while but I know that some of the long range forecasts are predicting still some more rain to come and it's important I think as we've indicated before that uh, we are at the start of the wet season there is a potential for other I issues to come up and again we must be prepared for those uh, issues as they come. So in the next 24 hours before the rain does start to ease what are the sort of worry spots in South East Queensland? Well, I think uh, the focus at the moment is uh, going to be uh, Dolby, um, as we speak, uh, Gympie, as we've indicated. Uh, we note the question in relation to Brisbane and, and the fact that the Brisbane Disaster Management Group were online today. The District Disaster Coordination Centre is up and running at uh, police headquarters uh, and the Disaster District Coordinator has stood up. We're advised that they're expecting only minor levels in some of those low-lying areas, so some of the streets and, and some of that can expect uh, inundation. There is a lot of work still being done in that regard, and I know that they're working very closely with the council uh, to, to do that. But again, we're trying to maintain a, tele a very holistic view here right across southeast Queensland, as well as central Queensland, to make sure that we're looking at all the affected communities, because as they cycle through, we're still looking at places like Theodore and Condamine, and Rockhampton and Emerald and what we're doing is making sure that as they cycle through the event that we're not neglecting those communities that are in need and that we're actually still meeting those demands and their needs as they're coming through. Um, given all the warnings that you're giving motorists about not crossing flooded roads and stuff, are you finding that people are still doing that? I think uh, some people will still chance their arm, they'll think, oh look it doesn't look that deep but I do draw uh, an analogy to an incident that occurred uh, back in December where a four-wheel drive was driving on a road. There was only 300 millimetres of water on the road and then it suddenly disappeared up to its roof line and the people had to scramble out and get on top of the roof of the, of the four-wheel drive. That is probably a very good example of uh, what happens on flooded roads. It's not so much as probably the speed of the water uh, tearing off the top of the road, but we're seeing photographs now of inundations through culverts where where um, dirt has been taken out from underneath the road and it still looks to be in good condition and as vehicles are travelling across it so uh, the damage is being caused to the vehicle and also to the road. Now the reason for highlighting this is, is that every life is precious. We are finding people still want to engage in, in water activities. Uh, we have performed a number of rescues in the Sunshine Coast with emergency service, Swiss wa swift water rescue from Queensland Fire and Rescue and what happens is it actually jeopardises the life of those or the lives of those people who've got to come and rescue people. So we're asking people just to uh, exercise some patience and common sense and yes there's plenty of ads out there that are saying uh, think about this before you actually do it. The objective on your journey is to arrive safely uh, and it is, is really uh, not about speed of travel at the moment. Uh, well, I'm sure that there are quite a few people out there that um, believe that it's within their capabilities uh, and uh, we respect that uh, particular understanding. But again it comes down to we are talking about some record flood levels here. We're talking about speed of water which uh, are in these sorts of streams and creeks are unheard of. And the example is at seven knots estimated speed of say the, uh, the Fitzroy River in Rockhampton if you put that into kilometres, it's a fraction over about 12 and a half kilometres an hour. Uh, and that's the speed at which this water is moving. And uh, I think you have to put that into context. It's not just a light rain in a, in a slightly flooded creek. We're talking significant floodwaters, record heights in some cases, where we're actually working in uncharted territory about trying to calculate where the water will go and at what speed it will travel. Thank you very much indeed.